And welcome in to the USGA Esports Grand Slam Series one more time in 2023. It is match play at Pinehurst number two. The USGA Esports Grand Slam Series is presented by Lexus. I'm Jeff Eisenman, and joining me today one final time is Jules Brook. Jules, we've got some match play coming at you today. It's taking place at Pinehurst number two. Thank you, Jeff. It's so great to be here. Yes, we are going to find out what that final piece of the puzzle is in our USGA Grand Slam series. Who is going to be our fourth major winner of the year? Because let's face it, it is a major championship in t uh, virtual golf. Uh, I'm very excited to find out who that is. Will it be a double winner in Jay Smithers or F Mags or F Mags even going in back to back wins of match play? Remember, he won just last month at Oakmont. Or are we going to have a new winner? Maybe a less, a yet unsung hero we shall find out very shortly yeah two of our three champions this season in this usga esports grand slam series are in the field all four players that we have today have qualified to get their 18 holes will we have 18 holes each match that's the question because this is match play so we'll see if we're able to go the distance with some of these matches at pinehurst number two really an interesting course when it comes to to match play that champion today everyone's going home with something that champion 750 dollars and a prepaid gift card 500 dollars in a usga shop card jewels that comes to a us dollars value of 1250 dollars <laughs> if my math is correct you are correct, Jeff. And, you know, cash up for grabs, it really ups the ante. It makes them work that little bit hard and take it all the more seriously. And who will be playing today, Jeff? Well, I'll tell you that because we have a four-person bracket. We've got two semifinals. Jay Smithers, F Magnets, perhaps they are the favorites. They're on opposite sides. Ishimi will be taking on Jay Smithers. We've seen him a bit this year. And Jess H, one of the surprises of this tournament. We always have some surprises. Can the underdog rise <laughs> up at Pinehurst number two? He'll have his hands full with F Magnets to start. Oh, yes, he definitely will. However, he has a little bit of a wave of confidence that he's surfing, Jeff, because he won in his rookie WGT Live Series event in January. And guess what? It was on Pinehurst number two. So he'll be feeling confident here. But at the same time, F Max, who he's up against, loves Pinehurst. This is, he really, really enjoys it here. So uh, he's, he's up for the challenge. Well, Pinehurst. Now we've got a lot to say about Pinehurst, don't we? Yeah, now an anchor site of the U.S. Open Championship. Three times a U.S. Open Men's Championship host. It'll be a fourth next June. One U.S. Women's Open. The second will be coming in 2029. A few U.S. Amateur Championships, a PGA Championship, the Ryder Cup, and that's not to mention all of the events that go on in what I'll, what I'll call 10 and a half courses at Pinehurst Jewels. 10 18 hole courses and the cradle one of the newer short courses out there unbelievable jeff and you said that all in one breath can we have a round of applause for you please <laughs> it's gonna be a long <laughs> afternoon a... jules <laughs> yeah pinehurst north carolina um it is a famous course it's one of the greats obviously designed by donald ross the michelangelo of golf and there are three things if i was con to condense all the information about this course three things you need to know one pine straw two undulations and crazy undulations and three those turtle back greens, aka those crown greens, often a little bit elevated from uh, the fairways that just cause havoc with the approach shots and with the putts. So um, it's going to be a very interesting course to see how that plays out, particularly towards the ends of the rounds. You know, there are high risk scoring opportunities as they present themselves often, but also it's set up to give the player options. So that will have a role to play, whether you come to the end a few up or not but f mags you got a lot to say about this course don't you <laughs> that's right jules there are some players that feel comfortable out here f magnets is one of them what do you feel going into competition at a course like piners number two hi jeff hi jules hi everyone um i think at pinehurst it's just a um a question of having played the course a lot and having a lot of course knowledge this was the first US Open venue that I played properly, the first virtual US Open venue way back in 2013 or 14, I think it was. Um, 
And so that was one of the very first courses that I learned to play well. Uh, I think I came second in that one at my first proper go at a virtual US Open. So, you know, I got the hang of it quite quickly and I've just kept that course knowledge all through the years. And what do you think about the way that it's set up? So, you know, there are lots of opportunities that present themselves, those high risk scoring ops, but at the same time, you have other options to play a bit more conservatively, which actually Jess did when he won in January. What do you think about that and how that will play into a match play event rather than stroke play? Well, I feel um, like the scoring wasn't that great in the live series event that we had. It was quite surprising to see a 57 win. Um, wow. Usually I'd be happy with a 56 or below here because um, you have two very, very long par fours, the fourth hole and the 16th hole, um, which sometimes are not even reachable into the wind. So that's quite often two pars already. Uh, the eagle chances are not very good here. The two par fives are both long pretty difficult. So really a 54 is quite often the perfect score you can get. So something like a 56 where you make two mistakes more than that is really not a bad effort. So that's the kind of score I'd be looking for. And I think that will be competitive in these games. And F Matt, first of all, that'll, uh, I, I think young 46 I know is having a watch party and I hope that he takes the time <laughs> to make a meme out of that. But F Max, stay with us here as we get started with the first semifinal of the day, Jay Smithers, Ishimi. And one of the things that we've seen, especially when we've seen the best of the U.S. Open, uh, some of these courses at Pinehurst can certainly challenge you from a distance perspective. They can challenge you on your second shots. What are the most difficult aspects of taking on Pinehurst as we watch this first hole? So the, the strong feature of this course is the way the greens are kind of like upturned saucers. So even though they look like they're quite big areas to hit to, if you get within a few yards of the edges of the green, the ball will feed off. So this pin here is a perfect example. It's a very short hole. It's an easy wedge shot in theory. But if you miss this shot about a yard or two to the right, it will take a bit of spin and feed all the way off to the green. So you will see the players, um, if they hit the shot they want to, missing about the yard left of this pin, just to be safe. Uh, and a lot of the greens are like that. When the pins are tucked towards the edges of greens, they're very near slopes that will take the balls off of the greens. And so the actual area that you've got to hit to is much, much smaller than the, than the green surface itself. So a very small landing zone to contend with. Now, I was looking at your stats, and yours and Jay Smithers' stats are actually equally. Your average distance to pin in a ranked game is nine feet, which is the lowest out of all the contenders today. But I was looking at your one putts, and you're ever so slightly ahead of Jay Smithers in that 72% of the time versus 71% of the time. So that should help. And those stats kind of feed into your confidence, I think, F Mags, and your experience on here at Pinehurst. I'm not sure that's relevant in all honesty. If, I think anybody watching this who knows anything about the game, if you had to choose a, a putter, somebody to take a putt between me and, and Josh, you would choose Josh every single day of the week. <laughs> <laughs> You're being humble out here. It's the truth. G just Jay ask Smithers chat. If you don't believe me, ask the people in chat. <laughs> <laughs> and we welcome in all of our viewers today for this final event of the USGA Esports Grand Slam Series. Like I said off the top, Jules, I got a notification right as we were starting. Young 46, surprisingly not in the competition, but he's hosting his own watch party right now. So everyone is getting involved out here as we get going with these first two semi-final matches. F Magnets joining us as well. A good look at the modern Pinehurst, right? Since that last renovation in 2010, no rough on the sides of these fairways. A lot of bunkers, a lot of potential trouble comes from the bunkers and the terrain. Yeah, they got rid of the rough. Um, 
for that renovation and instead it's all sort of sandy waste areas with brush growing in it. Um, the fairways are quite wide and generous here so it would be fairly unlikely to see anybody miss a fairway but if you do it becomes a lottery as to whether you end up in the sand which can give you um, a decent approach shot to the green or if you end up in a huge clump of brush and you just have to hack out with a wedge. So there is a kind of a lottery aspect to tee shots that miss the fairways here. And as you can see here on the second green, which is one of the most challenging holes on the course, a tiny green here, and Ishimi's ball has rolled just off it, even though it actually wasn't a bad shot towards the pin. It didn't land that far. An example of these turtle back greens. And that's going to open up the door here for Jay Smithers. Oh, and he's got the heartbeats. 214 out and making a statement early as that'll be a birdie try with Ishimi. A long way to go. Now that would have been a little bit scary for Josh seeing that ball drifting to the right of the hole because about a yard further right than that and that would feed all the way off the right hand side of the green which is the more common miss on this hole. I think Gavin was probably protecting against that and that's why he went too far left. And now Ishimi will work with this pitch shot. And F Max, he, he knew he had to be aggressive there, didn't he? Yeah, you might as well have a good go at it, try and throw it all the way into the hole. He knows with Josh's putting, it's very unlikely that he's going to miss the birdie there, so you have to make it. Jay Smithers to win a hole for the first time today. Pretty simple up and the hill there it. for him. And Jay Smithers, one up. A lot of wind early a factor coming at these players, which especially makes things challenging. This hole is just 387, but some of these Pinehurst number two par fours, some of the longer par fours in this game. Sometimes you have to play the, the man. Sometimes you have to play the game. When you're playing against Jay Smithers, F. Max, or we can throw Young 46 into this, you guys essentially being the big three of the game, how does your mindset change as opposed to some of these other players? And despite I'm talking about there is such widespread talent in this game, but when you're playing against one of these big three competitors, one of your rivals, what's the difference like in your mind? I think I said it last time in the um, the Oakmont match play broadcast. I try not to think about it at all. All you can do is take care of your own shots, play them as well as you can. Um, and if the other guy plays better or worse than that, that's not really up to you to control. And you can put a little bit of pressure on them by hitting good shots and take a bit of pressure off by hitting bad shots, of course. But if you just focus on your own game, hit the shots to the best of your ability, then... There's really nothing more you can do in a game of golf. Beautiful approach shot there from Jay Smithers, who's landed it, oh, I'd say, not more than a couple of feet from the hole on the third green. Ishimi trying to equal that. Still, he's got an uphill putt to try and square the hole. It's a good leave, but that doesn't exactly mean that he's going to be feeling calm on this next putt. Jay Smithers in tight, so Ishimi needs to take care of business. Pretty straightforward.
And he's got it. Birdie for Shimi. As he waits to see. Oh, just oh. a concession. There's a little bit of break in that, but we're moving on. We're playing fast. <laughs> we're not holding up play right now. Show. You've got the perfect win for these Gentlemen. guys on this hole here. This is exactly what you want now. Helping and right to left to get into that back left pin position. Do you enjoy that aspect of the game that we see it when we have our open championships where, you know, players play at different times, they get different wins in the game. When you're playing match play, obviously you can't complain about the wind because your direct competition is getting the <laughs> same wind as you on every hole. Yeah, exactly. I do prefer the match play because of that. You know you're not at any kind of advantage or disadvantage. You just, um, you're playing an absolutely fair game then. Uh, those, I think I've had particularly bad luck over the last 10 years or something with the wins in most of these big events. I really don't like the stroke play ones very much. Good luck here. This is an opportunity. It is a par four. You might think it's a par five. These players have the wind and still Ishimi has 245 left. That's pretty well done, all things considered. Just 237 in. This does make a difference, the distance. These extra 10 yards or so, 13 yards or so, that Jay Smithers is closer. Is three iron enough for him here? It will be, but you are re relying a little bit on the luck of the bounce because there's a very, very steep slope at the front of the screen. If you pitch right into that, the ball will kill, just like this. Whereas if you bounce it short and get it running up like Gavin did, then you can get it all the way up to the pin. Jay Smith has left himself a chip here at around 20 yards to get up towards the hole. bit of a miscue, obviously, instance. between clubs there. Yeah, I think he just needed to play it a little bit flatter, so the ball bounced short of that ridge we were talking about and ran up like Gavin's did. But a pitch is not a bad thing to end up with on this hole because it's a very, very difficult green to read anyway. It's almost easier to be throwing the ball all the way to the hole with a pitch um, and try and hold it out that way rather than trying to putt it. It's not at a disadvantage here, particularly. Oh, and he's got the heartbeats. <laughs> Almost. Oh, just missed. A raw smile at home there <laughs> for Josh. Thought he might have stolen something. So, F Mags, would you rather Smithers' chip than this putt over here on this hole? Um, I think the pitch is probably easier to hole out, but having played this course so often, you do end up with this particular putt. Um, and so you, most players should be very, very familiar with this and have a pretty good go at it. I think Gavin's going to miss way on the right, judging by the line. Yeah. A little bit of a safe play there for Gavin. Okay, so they move on with Smithers one up as they approach the fifth T 
tee. And this is a par five. These are some of the opportunities, especially in match play. Par fives, driving, so important. This hole playing into the wind a bit. Going to be hard for these players to get close to this green in two. Yeah, I think if they have a neutral wind on this hole, they can just about reach it by forcing a three wood up there. I think into the wind, unless some kind of miracle bazooka shot happens with the tee shot, I don't think either player is going to reach it. The wind does play a role on this hole. This is the hole that one would expect the most eagles in a tournament at Pinehurst. It's really the only good eagle opportunity here. Playing off the back tees anyway. A couple of the poor par fours are drivable um, or forward tees. But of course, we don't play those in the big events. Absolutely not. <laughs> See where that ball ends up. And Jay Smithers trying to put it around the same area. He's going to play the wind a touch off. Similar leave. You surprised F Mags to leave that on the lower left side as opposed to getting it higher up on that fairway, better angle in? No, it's a worse angle in, actually. The, the danger <laughs> on this hole is there's a massive, massive slope off the green just to yep. the left of the pin. So what you don't want to be doing is attacking this pin from right to left across the fairway because then if the ball just bounces a little bit and releases, you're running off the green. Both players, you will probably see, try to miss this slightly on the right-hand side just to be safe. And that's what you're talking about. Sit. Yeah. Commentator's yeah, you curse. Need to put a bit of control, yeah, a bit of controlling backspin needed on this particular shot just so it doesn't get away from you like that. How do you stay focused now? Is Shimi? You can play a touch more conservatively, but you don't want to leave yourself too far of a birdie putt. As a very unseasoned player myself, I always would find it easier to go second to see what... <laughs> and how about that? Oh. Just hold it out. How about that? <laughs> Is Shimi not playing any bit conservatively? <laughs> there goes right at it. And at least wow. can make Jay Smithers feel good, right? Even if he put that ball <laughs> an inch next to the hole, he still wouldn't have won the hole. How about that? So all square as they approach the sixth. Par three, around 224 yards. Toughest of the par three, statistically. It's only 224. This is another one where the pin's been tucked behind a little ridge. So if your shot comes up just a slightly, just a slight bit short, it'll pitch into the face of the ridge and come up short. Uh, the green slopes off to the right of this pin, so if you miss it right and running at all, then you run off into the bunker or the um, fringe on the right. So there's not much of an area to aim at with a, a big long club like a three iron. He's going four iron here, letting the wind play. Maybe, like you said, F Max playing a touch conservatively, no heartbeat. And wow! Ooh. <sighs> oh. Uh, that's a shame. Timing off, he says. We'll show Let's him. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, we'll show him a oh, better yeah. moment, Jules. <laughs> exactly. Happy memories. Straight in there. Simple. Done. An eagle on the last. This is the shot incoming from Jay Smithers. You see the heart beat? Yeah, that's perfect. Just what you want. Miss the pin slightly on the left. To try and take the trouble out of play. And it's a fairly simple birdie putt from there. We watch the best in the world throughout these competitions, throughout the year. We rarely get to see bunker shots. This is a short one for Ishimi, and it looks like he's going to play a flop shot right now. 
Yeah, it's a good choice of shot from here. The flop shot would usually go about 10 yards um, on the flat, and this is ever so slightly uphill, so you'll probably see him take a tiny bit off the power. It looks like he's taking too much off. This will probably come up short. Yeah. Got a little close to falling back into the bunker. Jay Smithers to go back one up. F Max highlighted the putting of Jay Smithers earlier. This is where he makes his big dough in WGT. And right down the and heart. And he's got it. Jay Smithers back to one up. This semifinal match is through six. F Magnets, you have your semifinal match coming up. You're taking on Jess H. But we appreciate the time that you've spent with us this morning, getting us going, getting us rolling, and good luck to you the rest of the way. Maybe Thank we'll talk much, to you guys. again. Maybe we'll talk to you have again at the end of the competition. <laughs> Have a great round. It's not the loser's Steph interview next. after the first round. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Enjoy we the rest shall. of the broadcast. Thank Over you, F Max. Thank you. And he'll be taking on Jess H. So we're going to try to get Jess H in here as we take a look at Ishimi trying to cut the corner. Yeah, the. Par four seventh is the sharpest dog leg on the course. So this is what they'll all be aiming to do here around this corner. Cluster of bunkers on the right to be aware of as the fairway turns. Mainly for playing in real life though. I think we'll be fine virtually. Another heartbeat for Jay Smithers. <laughs> and another beautiful shot. A couple miscues, but this is the type of player he is, Jules. Came up short on one hole, missed left on another, and two straight gorgeous approach shots for Jay Smithers. Yeah. I mean, are we surprised? I think not. He is a titan of this game, Jeff. But Ashimi really giving him a run for his money. I mean, they're through six, and he's only one down. And I'd say, uh, playing against Jay Smithers, that is not bad. So far, so good. And he's got the heartbeats here on his approach. Again, left himself what looks like an uphill putt. Not too much margin fair or break in this, just a little. But as the game goes on, he's going to have to make more and more of these to give himself a chance towards the end. Oh. And that's where disappointing. It, it starts to get, you start to get a little tentative. Those are putts that all of the practice that Ashimi probably had this week, he probably made that putt 99% of the time. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. Obviously, these are ranked games. It's tournament conditions. So it just adds that little more pressure. But to miss by just that much in match play, it, it hurts. So that puts Jay Smithers two up now through seven. 
Now that opens a big door as we get another one of these long par fours, 502 yards into the wind. So you really got to make sure you crank both of these two shots. That was clean for both players. So actually in regular golf, Jeff, this is played as a par five. Regular golf just... for, for the amateur folk like us out there. <laughs> That's true. If we're playing in real life, yeah. But at the US, for the U.S. Open and therefore for today, it's a par four. The green dramatically sloped from back to front here on the eighth. Oh, Jay Smithers with the heartbeats once more. It becomes almost not fair when he is locked in like this. <laughs> mm. Hitting is, the ding every time. That is a much more difficult shot with a long iron than he just made that look. And now Ishimi has to answer. Coming off the short putt miss at the last... Shaking his head. I wonder if we're on the delay here. Oh, that's okay. Stop dead. Didn't roll off much. But he does have a tricky downhill putt that he's not looking too pleased about. Just a big difference here, especially at Pinehurst, when you go from 6 mm. to 12 feet. And I was talking about their average distance to pin for their approach shots. Um, Jay Smithers and FMAG's equally are nine feet, but you know what? I mean, Jay Smithers has pitched well, le way less than nine foot e virtually every time. I, I don't recall anything that's been outside of that, Jeff, today so far. And he needed that. Wow. Yes, he did. Perfect speed, perfect line for Ishimi. And Jay Smithers working quickly. No problem there. So Jay Smithers, two up through eight holes at the moment. They move to the ninth. And we bring in Jess coming at us going to be part of our second semi-final today against f magnets welcome in what are you seeing from this first semi-final competition that we're taking a look at well good morning jeff jules good to see you um looks like gavin hishimi's uh struggling with his meter a little bit i don't know if that's intentional or not um some of us like me don't play for ding like josh does all the time but Judging from his reactions, it doesn't look to be intentional. So he's just a little bit off, but back nine at Pinehurst, I mean, anything can happen. This could get, this could turn in a hurry. So we'll see how it goes. Well, of course, you have experience winning on this course, Jess. You know, I got to talk about your performance here in January. Does that give you a little bit of confidence coming into today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for defending me when Jeff was throwing me under the bus saying I'm the no-name underdog <laughs> at the top of the broadcast. I was offended by that. I, I'm looking at everybody here like I, I'm the favorite. I'm the defending champ here at Pinehurst. So, no, I, that's not somewhat true. But, <laughs> um, no, it should be good. I do play this course well. Obviously, Mags plays it really well, too. I mean, he was right there in January as well. And, He's been in plenty of these big events, so I should be the underdog in pretty much any of these because, I mean, I could go out there and shoot a 62 just as easily as I can go out and shoot a 55 today. So we'll see. How Jeff do you think your skills here manage to translate into match play, though? Because it is different match play to stroke play. Yeah, yeah, it is. I think 
for me, Pinehurst, you pretty much play it the same every time, whether it's match play or stroke play. It's so much wind dependent as whether you can be aggressive going for a hole or not. I mean, if you get, um, you know, the first hole, if you get a <gasps> right to left wind, oh, ooh, that was close. Ishimi just missed the cup. But, uh, you know, first hole, if you get a right to left wind with that slope on the right, you can't really be super aggressive to that whole location. You got to play it out to the left a little bit and left to right. You can be a little bit more aggressive, let the wind bring it back, but you still got to play a little bit more conservatively there. Um, I mean, my thought process with Pinehurst is, you know, get it to the right side of the hole. If you're left with a 12 footer up the hill, it's a lot better than a eight footer down the hill, which could be said for a lot of the courses in this game, but here in particular, just because of the the turtle back greens and if you miss on the wrong side, you're off the green. Well, Jess, it's it's only a rite of passage on these USG, USGA esports broadcasts to be inspired by me saying something wrong on on air. So <laughs> I'm glad to hear that you're that, that I I lit a spark for you there. But with that said, the the qualifying to get here, um, to get to this, the opportunity to play F Magnets, what went right for you in that journey to get to this final event of the season? I. Well, I played well all four rounds. Um, probably the toughest match I had was round two against um, well, one of my better buddies on the game, clubmate uh, Kev1075. Um, I was really struggling with the meter that round and missed dinging a lot. I think I had four pars on each side, but I had three eagles. I eagled. 5, 10, I mean like a 66 foot putt at 10 for Eagle, and then... Uh, you chip in at 13 well, again? I'm trying to remember. I know I <laughs> I hold out somewhere as well, so it was um, a little bit of a fluke round that I <laughs> had that many Eagles um, and got him by a stroke, so yeah, it's... And then I think I played another club mate in the final. Uh, Mason Villa, and he played really well. I think I beat him 58 to 59 in the high winds conditions. So just play consistent. Everything was that 56 to 58 range, and you know didn't run into somebody with a heater. Um, I mean, the same round that third round I shot a 55 to advance, and another buddy of mine, DB, who won last year, DB Stronghold. Um, he shot a 56 and he lost. And it's a little bit of a luck of the draw if you run into somebody with a good round. I'm pretty sure he lost to Shimi. He had a 55 that third round as well. So a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill. It's always involved in this game. We just keep saying we'll 80, see how it goes. 80 yards out here. Jay Smith, there's a punch shot. And I was surprised to see him there just not take the flag out. I'd be thinking Jay Smithers would be thinking, hold that all the way. Yeah, I've played with Josh quite a bit in cash games and, you know, side bet type stuff, and he rarely takes the flag out unless it's a pitch, I believe. Um, he's not one of those that believes that you're going to hit the pin and get hurt more often than if you take it out. Because I've seen it work both ways. I tend to take the pin out on all my approach shots, but I've got hurt by it pretty bad a few times so again that's where luck of the draw you can hit the perfect shot hit the hole on the fly and end up with a 60 footer coming back which has happened to me here <laughs> on this particular course another concession there at some point you gotta wonder if Ishimi needs to make Jay Smithers putt some of these try to get something get some luck get something to happen eight more holes to go Yeah, I mean, hey, he hasn't had to putt a lot, but Josh doesn't miss those very often. What's so we've got winds coming in from the left here. How's that going to affect uh, their t-shirt? This particular hole location, 
they just have to make sure that they get the wind direction if it's helping hurting right it looks like it's helping slightly off the left this particular pin seems to play a little bit short for me um, there's probably a lot of people out there watching thinking I'm crazy for saying that but I've played plenty of holes with my buddies and stuff like that some holes play short for me where they play long for them um, but for me here, it tends to play short, so I'd play it probably, so Josh's got 168, I'd play it 166, and just let it ride the wind into the hole, and looks like he's done that beautifully with a little misting to the left there. Yep. He dings that, it's probably perfect, but that's where I was saying I tend to try to misting on the wind side, kind of, I guess I equate it to playing a little draw into the wind to hold it up a little bit. And now for shimmy, shimmy here, yep. he's, where he's set up, unless he moves it, it looks like he's playing to misting big to the left to hold it up. Yep. Doesn't look happy with it. He's not That's happy okay. with it, but he was, it was a good shot. Yeah. But that's where I was saying, like, you know, Josh tends to ding. Um, I tend to try to miss ding like he did. It's just varying degrees of it. I mean, I know some people who play this game without ever moving the aimer, and they just try to miss ding big enough left or right to account for the wind. I don't know how the hell they play that way, but uh, I've seen people do it. Yeah, this is, I suppose it's easier this in is wins, competition but. level of missing the ding, yeah. like of, of risking to do that. That's something I would never consider doing myself if I was playing WGT. <laughs> My focus is getting it every time. But I guess it well, it's, you, you know, to have more creative shots, doesn't it, Jess? Yeah, well, and you're, you're hedging your bets a little bit with stuff like that, like what uh, Gavin did there, playing a little bit less Oof. wind break with his aimer, intending to miss ding left. You know, it ended up working out well for him. If he dings it, or he misses right, he's probably still on the green. It's not going to be a good shot. He's going to be a good, you know, 20, 25 feet right, but he's on the green. Now, if he aims far enough out over the bunker, if he missed things big like that, there's a chance that he misses the green to the left, and he's in real big trouble there. At least he leaves himself a putt with it when he plays that way. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a gaming computer, so I don't, that's part of why I don't try to hit ding because I can't most of the time. But uh, what do you play on, Jess? I I just play on a regular laptop. Okay. It's I see. Uh, it's a different laptop than the one I played with in January and February for the live series event. Um, oh, okay. I had, lightning, I had a lightning strike since then, and it actually blew up my internet, my computer. <gasps> no. Everything. Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. What are yeah, the chances? Came in, it, <laughs> Yeah, it hit the hit the internet cabling somewhere in the system and ran all the way through. Um, hit my house, blew up my modem, my Wi-Fi router, ran through the Cat Six that I had run into the laptop and fried the laptop out. Whoa! That that would have been a very stressful week of trying to get everything back, like <laughs> files and things. Yeah, well, the I was able to get the files off the laptop because it. Um, would still turn on and just well, it wouldn't hold a charge anymore. So it fried the battery, yeah. I guess, more appropriately. Uh, okay. But tried a new battery and it still wasn't doing. So there was something. I'm not techie. I'm not exactly sure what it was, but there was something in there that it wouldn't hold a charge anymore. So. So yeah, new laptop was the first time trying this. We'll see. Okay. A little scary during the tech chests on that. That was the first time we were going through the testing. I wasn't able to even get close to hitting ding because the meter was skipping all over, but uh, the guys at Super League worked with it, got the uh, the settings better, and by the end of it, we were we were playing golf again. Okay, so you're ready to rock. And yes, we do have a great team behind the scenes here at Super League Gaming. They look after us so well, and uh, so they this, always uh, get us covered in some way. Josh is taking some care of this putt because he knows this is a tricky one. Um, depending on, there's a ridge there, depending on which side of it you're on, it can go left or it can go right. 
Yep, <laughs> I was just gonna say I wouldn't be surprised to see him wonder this because he can't figure it out. Oh, no. That's casual. What? Sorry, I just uh, d did that just happen? <laughs> Jay That's Smithers, a different not type of cat. An uncommon play. Oh, well, it's, I've got to say, I've been doing this for uh, well over a year. I haven't seen that yet happen on the green, that kind of shot taking place. What club was that? Uh, he just hit a, it's, a we call it a wedge. water, so a wedge putter. Um, if okay. you know the math on it, you can get over some of that initial break when you're unsure like he was. Wow. You, know, you just got to get the speed right, hit ding, and it, there's still a chance to miss, but... It's not that uncommon of a play. Um, That's a play amazing. Like that. This is the you know, uh, creative shots that competition at this level ensues. Uh, Try that on the course next time you play, Jules. <laughs> yeah, great. Can't wait. <laughs> Sometimes our greens are so sopping wet here in wet and windy England that uh, I think we'll be needing to do that. But uh, yeah. Never ceases we'll to see. surprise Maybe me, some of the... If, if I have the opportunity to rise, I'll throw one out there for you guys today. Give you a shout out. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> but yeah, there's certain putts on the game. I know uh, number six at Kiowa with the pin on the back left. If you leave yourself below the hole left, that putt is terrible coming up the hill. You never know which way it's going to go. That's one that I would typically do the same thing that Josh did there and okay. hit the wedge from the green um, just to take that break out of it. Um, other times I've been playing with it a little bit more lately with uh, putts where you have a lot of heavy foot break, like a lot of break in the first part of the putt and then it straightens out. I'll make that play just to eliminate that initial break. But I... Even though I said I'd do it, I probably won't be toying around with that today against Mags. <laughs> Don't want to embarrass myself in front of all my fans. <laughs> Jess, speaking of which, before we let you get ready for the competition, I mean, I know I already called you an underdog, but I also want to know, what's your life like outside of WGT? What's the life like of Jess beyond the, the video game? Uh, a lot of hockey. Um, I saw, well, I saw the, the CCM hat for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, my daughter's actually at a game right now. I'm missing a game to play this today. Um, they're actually you're probably going to pop on the live barn here, the streaming service, and try to watch while I'm playing. So I might be a little distracted. But, yeah, a lot of <laughs> hockey. I coach, I ref. My daughter plays. We have, looking at the schedule for our winter season, we have one weekend off this year and it's the Christmas weekend but she plays triple A in the spring and the fall as well she's a pretty good hockey player um, good defenseman so that's where 90 percent of my time outside of the uh, WGT world well that and work obviously but um, yeah in fact I'm hopefully after I win today I can go celebrate with her in a, in a hockey victory because she's got another game this afternoon around three o'clock my time well, the good news is because you're in the final four, you're going home with at least something. So I have a feeling she's going to get at least mm. at least a solid USGA shop item for you missing today's uh, hockey game. Well, and that, <laughs> honestly, that's one that, you know, where it came down to was like, like, hey, kid, you know, dad's got this thing, you know, that golf game he plays, you know, around bedtime. If he shows up, he gets some money, even if he loses. Like, are you okay <laughs> if he... <laughs> If he plays, <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, she's got, like, 50 Special games treat. this year. Uh -huh. I think, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll take her to Starbucks oh, later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shimi just, yeah, just holds on there. Three down with five more to go. Listen, Jess, we're going to let you go. You've got a semifinal coming up right after this. Good luck in your match against F-Mags, and maybe we will talk to you later. Play Sounds well, good, guys. Jess. Prove me wrong. Thanks, Jules. And good luck to your daughter in her game, too. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe we should call that, too, Jules. Yeah, why not? 
I don't I don't know how familiar your, your hockey knowledge is in the UK, but absolutely zero. <laughs> <laughs> I literally, do you know, I'd love to watch a game. I think they do have a display game about once a year over mm -hmm. at the Olympic Park where we hosted the Olympics. I think there's a nice hockey rink there. Well, they turned it into one. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, I, I am very uh, ignorant to the sport, but I, it's something I definitely want to know more about. And it's something that I think my son would suit because he's very gritty. You know, he grinds his teeth and he's got a lot of bit of rage sometimes. And um, I think I think his personality type would definitely suit ice hockey. <laughs> Heartbeats for Ishimi here. It was a good shot. It's not close, but the putt looks relatively straightforward. A good shot. He just needs something special happening right now. And Mm. We could see Jay Smithers going to pitch mode just to see the contours of the green. It's amazing that this guy can look at an 179-yard shot, and he is thinking about mm. every aspect of this all the way up until the hole. He just wants to get the job done, Jeff. You know, there are only five holes now left to play. That includes this one, the 14th. And he's got the heartbeats. That's very close. And he keeps it a little bit more of an uphill putt. So Ishimi, this is all of the nerves coming in on this putt. Okay, so it's a little downhill. really got to make this one to stay in the game. <laughs> and it, yeah, and he's got it. <laughs> a couple of those putts, Jules, barely, mm. barely grabbing mm. the edge and holding on for mm. dear life. Oh, yeah, with the fingertips, just, you know... <laughs> He, he knows that was important to make, to give himself a chance and, and, coming and, into the last stretch. Yes, Jeff. not to go Not to go all Ricky Fowler, Tommy Fleetwood here, but at oh, some yeah. point, you got to <laughs> even these short putts. I understand all of the sportsmanship and, and, and that aspect of the competition, but now you're three down with four to play. At least mm. let's see some of these four-footers. <laughs> So you'd be like, haul out, haul out. But well, I'm saying, right. you know, and we see Jay Smithers. Yeah. That's, he doesn't oh, love it. That no. is going to roll no. off. That's disappointing. That is Donald Ross at work with his course design. Greens only there to award the very accurate shots. So now the door open for Ishimi. Ishimi, he's got himself a five iron in hands. Remember, he misjudged one of these downwind par threes earlier. You could see, Jules, how fierce that wind is going to be. We just saw the runoff. He's going to have to, if he's going to play this club, that is a lot of club in this shot. No heartbeats. And that is just... Oh, and he's done the same thing. That, that feels like a brain cramp of some sort, Jules, mm. because from the beginning, just doing the basic math, that seemed like he was going to airmail that shot. He's... Smithers is appeasing him by saying it was the wind. And yeah, you know, they had the tailwinds coming up behind them. 
that he will be kicking himself for that shot, Ishimi. Now Jay Smithers. He can hold out and we can basically go home. <laughs> and just missed it. Oh. It was the 1973 U.S. Open champion Johnny Miller that said trying to land a ball on one of these Piners number two greens was like trying to hit a ball on top of a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> well said. I wouldn't want to take these on. I have yet to take on Pinehurst in my WGT career. Very short career, I might add. But it looks pretty terrifying. <laughs> That and Pebble Beach. I have yet to uh, <laughs> get the confidence to try. Oh, oh he's... Would have been huge for Ishimi. The only hole that he's won today was on a hole out. And again, conceding that to Jay Smithers, which means now that we are looking at Jay Smithers three up with three to play. So... If Ishimi wants to win this match, he's got to win the last three holes. He can't win this thing in regulation. And Jay Smithers just needs a have on 16. Sixteenth is a 533 par four. Slight dog leg left. If you favor the left side off the tee. There'll be a bit of a forward bounce off the fairway. And the green sloping from back to front. So there'll be a bit of a slight downhill lie for those approach shots. Gotta rise up to the moment right now. See a lot of club here into the wind. No heartbeat, and we can even see that ball drifting left. He's shaking his head, he doesn't like it. Where has it gone? Looks like it might have just. Yeah, just... Just up. Yeah. It's... Still, though, that's... <laughs> it's an awkward lie. Not a heartbeat, but an excellent stroke for Jay Smithers and a safe play. You see him nod his head there, Jules. Two putt yeah. probably gets it done. Yeah, he just needed to be conservative on here and allow Ishimi to give it a go, give it his best shot, as it were, with this tricky downhill. What has he taken out? Taken out a loft wedge. He went after it. Ah, oh, just kissed it, but didn't quite go in. And that should just about do it. We should see Jay Smithers cozy this up and get the concession. And he's not even going to put it out. Ishimi, the ultimate sport here, by conceding, we actually get a four and two finish officially as Jay Smithers wins four up with two to play. Just a pretty dominant comp display of talent from Jay Smithers there. Obviously the one win is Shimi holding out. Probably would have won the hole anyway, but Jay Smithers able to get it done. He's the first winner in our semifinals today. 
Yes, statistically, of course, he was coming in the strongest. He was the highest seed out of all the competitors today. So, yeah, Jay Smith is, has made his way into the final. And I'll be looking forward to seeing who he is going to be up against. And I think that next match is underway. F Max and Jess coming up. Let's take a look again at the highlights. Ishimi went one down early, but this was a hole out eagle on five. All of a sudden, yeah, maybe we Jay thought... Smith is stopping to give him a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> Something might be going right, but then you see Jay Smithers won three of the next four holes to go three up at the turn. And then it was just cruise control going back and forth, having holes on this back nine until finally he was able to get it done. This was a fun shot on 12. Yeah, that was definitely surprising to watch, but I love the creativity of these real veterans of the game. And here, he's at the 14th, he's three up. And I think at that point, Ishimi had that pressure on him as he was coming down the final stretch that he had to have some moments of magic. And he kind of never really delivered them, I think, Jeff. Uh, and yeah, Jay Smithers took it. We see it a lot from Jay Smithers, sort of like a boxer who knows that he doesn't necessarily need the knockout, but he just can't get knocked out when he starts to win a couple of those rounds, starts to win a couple of those holes in this situation. He has won one of our competitions earlier this year. Could he be the only two-time champion this season of the USGA eSports Series? We will see. We're going to move on to F Magnets and Jess. Jules, we spoke to both competitors over the last hour or so. What were your ob observations? Obviously, F Magnets has been here before in so many competitions, but you talked about it. Jess, a lot of success at Piners number two. So F Max obviously he's come off the back of a win of a match play event only just last month. So he's definitely going to have a lot of momentum coming into this match right now. And Jess, it's quite adorable, really, how he talks <laughs> about F Max, isn't it? It's it's very sort of you know teacher student type thing. Like oh, you know F Max, he's so great, he's so great. I've watched him, I know what he's like. And um, there's a deep amount of respect that comes from Jess to F Max, and and of course there's a mutual respect. F Mags, of course, has a respect for him. And he's ha he's got that. In fact, both players have got a real humbleness and, and they feel that luck it has a huge part in it. I slightly disagree with that. I think both of them uh, know how to play well. They're experienced enough and they have a game plan. And the game plan's been working for them so far. So both got Thank a good you. preview of this course and how some of these pins are playing. Just taking the flag stick out early. Yeah, that's his thing, <laughs> as he said, his trademark. And that's an aggressive play early on. We know that there's a runoff to the right of this first hole location. So you got to be a Hot little bit beats careful. for FMAX too. That was F Mags getting another look at ah, shot okay. from Jess. But we expect something similar. F Mags, he, he's got the vacation look going right now, Jules. Oh, always. Yeah. He's sort of um, displaying his Copacabana Beach vibes because I believe he is dialing in from Brazil where he lives, even though he's a born and raised Londoner like me. We are from the same postcode. Beautiful shot there, despite not having the heartbeats. Eight feet, going to test himself a bit early. Yeah, quite a bit of break in this part. Taking his time here. He was, I don't know if you would call it, humble or self-deprecating earlier Jules talking about how he would much rather trust he would rather trust Jay Smithers with a putt than himself <laughs> yeah both self-deprecating and humble <laughs> gets the job done early that? and Jess is working quickly does as well well he had a while didn't he to think about that putt <laughs> a putt that when you're like these players at this point in this competition, they have seen all of these putts so many times before. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and these two particularly, very familiar with these greens. F Mags, who really enjoys playing at Pinehurst, uh, won the virtual US Open here. And of course, Jess coming off the back of a win here only this year. And while we watch this match, we're going to bring in our first winner of the day. Jay Smithers awaits the victor in this competition. Hello, As hello. Josh, hello. Good morning or good afternoon, we should say. It's right. You just passed noon in yeah. the Chicagoland area. Good win for you early on. Only lost one hole on a hole out. How in control did you feel against Ishimi? Um, I mean, I pretty much hit every shot I wanted to hit in that match. Um, the couple I missed, I missed small and missed to the correct side. So uh, I really didn't – I played a pretty mistake-free round, which it, it's pretty rare at Pinehurst, and, it, and it's hard to beat when it happens. Except for that stupid shot on five. We're not going to talk about it, though, because it was a little <laughs> – Well, wait, wait, let, was, let's talk for a second. It was a lie. Max gets <laughs> – Gets the heartbeat here. Did you at least feel better after Ishimi holed out that even if you kept that shot close, it wouldn't have mattered? No, because, well, now I can say I would hold out the pitch, right? It was in. I was going to make it. Dang it. Gavin, <laughs> you big jerk. Yeah, yeah. I, once he holed out, I was like, well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, because I didn't want to look like a complete idiot in par par five here today, so. <laughs> We're getting a look at Jess. We've talked about the success that Jess has had at Pinehurst, but hasn't quite had success in these USGA competitions. What do you know about his game and how solid he is on this track? Uh, Jess plays Pinehurst pretty well. Um, I expect him to put up a pretty good fight. I mean, Chris is, is just the pedigree, obviously. He's got to probably be the betting favorite, but uh, it wouldn't be surprising to see this match go all 18. Okay. Oh. Oh, we got to make those, just though. Just missing it. Oh, you can see the frustration there with Jess on his cab. Yep, and Chris is close enough to where that big break shouldn't be that big of a deal on this putt. I, I would expect this one to fall. And him and his super fast flash dots make this putt look like it's breaking 14 and a half grids, but it should be a fraction of that. Let's see what he's got here. A little early. I think that's good to go. Nice putt. Okay, so F Mag's one up going on to the third hole. Yeah, and, and the first three holes here are are vital to the round. You want to get off to that 3-3-3 three, three, three start, especially with driver wedge on two of the holes. And number two is really not all that difficult as long as you don't um, roll it off the green. And then you get Pinehurst, number four, number five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> we can go on all day. Any holes that surprised you um, after your round, Josh? Looking back. Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen was terrible. I, I so I hate fifteen. The two hundred two yard par five, or par three. Hmm, par three. Yeah. So I I hate it. Like like with every fiber of my being like that hole is my enemy <laughs> so i went and practiced it i practiced it so many times and when i had that tailwind that exact tailwind um the shot i hit i hit 20 times into it and every time it was within 12 15 feet maybe at maximum you know and a couple were pretty tight and then that one just flies over the green and goes off and i'm like yeah of course it does why wouldn't it it's a bane in my existence on that hole. <laughs> Just a little par three. How about this? Just oh, a, F magnets. Oh, wow. I expect, uh, 
Ooh. And heartbeats for Jess as well. Oh, oh my hit a ding, I see Jess. you. I raised you. Hit a ding, kid. I mean, yeah, two conceded parts. Let's move on. Wait, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, Josh, were you? Mm. Did you have us on when you were playing? Yeah, I could hear you. Yeah. So I, I look. I said I don't want to be. You know, I don't want to pose a Ricky Fowler, Tommy Fleetwood situation. But at some point, I felt like Ishimi might have needed to at least see a couple of those four or five footers on the back nine. Hmm. They were all proper position. I mean, yeah, he could have made me put them, but every one of them was proper um, as far as position-wise. So, yeah, maybe he should have probably, you know, down the stretch, make make me make a couple. But they were all they were all in the right spot at least. So I, I would like to think I would have made them. Jeff, what do you expect Jay Smithers to say? Of course, he's well, I, say I, that. look, we all expect <laughs> we all expect them to be made. It's the nature of match play. You, no, you know, I, everyone I, wants to. And Jeff, we've talked, and you know me. I'm. Uh, I'll, I'll make you. I'll make you put a foot, dude. I, I was gonna say. I know you're gonna. Make I don't care, bro. I, I, like, <laughs> I don't care. I, was gonna say, I mean, you could send me a nasty just, message on Discord. I'll just. I'll just ignore it and move on with my life. <laughs> It's just a true display of Ishimi's gentlemanly behavior, I think. Just Gavin is one of the best people I've met in this game, like as far as just simply a good person. Oh, and, that's uh, lovely to hear. And it, it, oh, he's fantastic. I, I love him. I love playing against him. And uh, and I mess, you know, we message back and forth here and there. But, I mean, he played well in the back nine. He, he just had a rough stretch in the middle of the front. Six through nine, really we're, we're bad. Um, oh, that's a great shot like by that. Jess. And he should love it. Why do you think he's disappointed then, Josh? Why? I think he, he, and... he missed a little early, so he thought maybe it was going to go like far. Because that three was a little weird sometimes. So it'll it'll yank left pretty hard. But that one went perfectly online. He's going to have a very, very makeable uphill putt there. And Chris's is bad. Yeah, he certainly has the easier of the two putts here on the fourth green. Absolutely. Now, if Chris makes this, you know, you might just tip your cap and go make a cup of coffee and, and concede the match. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Looking no, at the dots, you're, you're, it really doesn't... <laughs> It, this is one you don't expect him to make, right, Jeff? I mean, <laughs> you're. And by the way, he—I I don't know if you heard—he was, he was so complimentary to you about your putting, and just how he would rather any day of the week trust you over himself putting. Um. Well, the, the, I mean, that's quite the compliment. Thank you very much, Chris. Um. I don't see his ball in the green. I'm 99% sure that went in the hole. Jess follows it up with a great bird. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he made it. Wow. wow. That's a good butt. So F Max so, is feeling it a little bit. So let me just flip the script. I would trust him to putt. How about that? Very, very humble as we'll maybe see you guys go head to head in the final. I'll tell you what, if there was one guy in this game that I was going to and I had like a big downhill breaking putt, and it had to go in. There's a name named B Shake 08. B Shake 08. Oh, yes. That's the guy you I want putting that in. name. Yeah. That's the guy. How does he approach his putts, Smithers? Is he? Um, he, is he more he, of a fail player, or is it no, just no? No, he's um, very methodical. Very everything's okay. calculated down to the last revolution yeah. of the ball. And the ball, like literally, wow. like you know, Tiger, um, the Nike symbol falls in after it stops for a second. Type that's like his putt oh, yeah. every okay. flipping time. <laughs> Love it. Oh, it's beautiful. I get mad at him. I yell at him. I call him foo foo putts and hit the ball already. Like, what are you doing? But in real life, I just wish I could do it. So the par five fifth. 
a hole that everyone intends to eagle. Well, this is, if Josh, this is, this is incredibly different of a wind compared to what you had earlier oh, yeah. today on this hole. This is a great wind. Coming in from the right. Slight tail coming in. Yeah, yeah. They're licking chops here, looking for eagles. A totally different hole, basically, than what you had going mm -hmm. into the wind. Yeah. Ah. Oh, and he's not. He's mad about that one. Although it's not going yeah. offline. I mean, he hit it a oh. mile. Yeah. Still that could have gone though. way, way worse, though. I mean, with that. <clears throat> you guys, I'm sure you've heard it plenty of times with the three wood. That thing, sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. It's just going to go wherever it wants. But Champ will tell you it's the best club in the game, and it's super accurate, and there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Were you surprised? I think it was 15, par 3 on the back nine, that uh, that shot that Ishimi <laughs> had? Um. Yes and no. Like... I mean, he played it. He played it the same way I played it. He played it to what he he knows it to do. So, in in that aspect, no, I'm not surprised. But at the same time, like, I, I mean, you'd want to maybe be a little more conservative, knowing you got to find a way to get one. But at the same time, I mean, all you can do is hit the shot that you know you think you're supposed to hit, and and whatever happens, happens. Sometimes champ turns up them wins on you after you hit the ball, and it's. I mean, it's typical champ sitting there with controls, just individually <laughs> picking out players and, and messing with them. Champ's like the Buffalo Wild Wings guy. He he is. He loves it too. <laughs> Don't let him fool you. He loves it. This is now an uphill putt for F Mags. You've seen Jess cozy up his first. You know, I heard Mags talking something about uh, Ishimi's putt on four against me. And it's one of those putts you've had so many times. It's not great, but you've had it so often that you kind of expect it to at least give it a really good run. And, and this is a similar type putt. I mean, I, I kind of expect him to make it, to be honest. Oh, oh he's going to. Look at that. Oh, yep, wow. there How you go. That? And that's our second eagle of the day here from F Wags in our second match. And he goes two up now. That was a great putt. We kind of called it before, knew that F Mags, that might be an opportunity yeah. for him. It's, so we've it's seen two eagles thing. now on five today. And yeah. the heartbeat on six now. Oh, boy, he's feeling it now. That should release. That's a great spot. Not a hard putt there. And this hole is a nightmare hole. Oh, Jess. Why is that? There's a slope in front yeah, of it. There's a slope to the right of it. And the pin's tucked all the way on the right. So you, the mm -hmm. common miss is what Jess just did right there. When you just pull it and, and miss left. Because it's just hard to, to let yourself... Uh, you know, let the meter get all the way down to try and ding it and hit that perfect shot. You basically just described every green at Pinehurst. <laughs> I was going to say. Dude, they're, this course is a clown show. <laughs> I've, but it's, this it's, particular it's, hole, statistically, it is the toughest of the Oh, I bet this hole plays. I would love to see how much over par it plays, but I, if it was less than a full stroke, I'd be shocked. Uh, he's gonna miss it low. Ah, yep. uh, disappointing. He's kind of all over the place with the uh, with the meter. I haven't seen him hit on the correct side yet. He's got to hone that in. Did you earn a trip to next year's U.S. Open already? I I don't know. I won the virtual U.S. Open, but I didn't hear nothing about a trip to the U.S. Open. I, I don't know. I feel like you you and Jason and F Max at some point. It feels like every year you might have gotten. A trip, but yeah, I've, maybe I've had them the last few years, but and I won the virtual U.S. Open this year, so I'm not sure if I don't get them through that, I don't think I'm getting them. So you won't you won't get to yell at Pinehurst up close, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I would love to, though. You know what I would do? Honestly, I would like walk up to like one of the greens and I would just just like spit like right on the edge of it. 
That's <laughs> mostly <laughs> Just kind of like a, mm, yeah. On the about, 15th, how about I that? think, right? Yeah, on the 15th. I'd walk right into the edge, and I wouldn't put it on like hole. where they're putting, you know. <laughs> just right on the edge. Let's take another look. Let's take another look at that F Magnets. Eagle at five. Just got it enough. And now he's three up through six. Three up. Yeah, Jess has got to find the ding. Otherwise, it's going to get out of, out of hand. Mags is hitting it, and Jess is not. And this hole right here is a little bug or two while we're at it. One twenty three in for Jess. Trying to find something. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if he had well, I you know what I love what he's doing here. He's going to a little punch shot. This is a great play. I I, I kinda hit like a makeshift punch into here. I hit a a really underpowered seven and it tends to just kind of die which is pretty easy to control but i love the punch here let's get aggressive kid <laughs> nice shot oh got the heartbeats yeah that was uh now that was impressive and it feels like every time a player like Jess gets an inch, this is when we'll see F Mags try to throw something even closer. You know, Mags is dirty enough to hold this out, like right on top of his shot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Jess is over there, like, yeah, all right, got a little momentum, then just dunk. How much does it trigger a break in your momentum when someone ups the ante and does better than you on a particular hole. Does it does it really kind of affect you? No, I love it. In match play? I love it. You relish it. Like, I you, love when, yeah, when, when Gavin on. hold that out. I, I loved it because that meant he was going first on the par three next. And when I seen him miss ah, to the right, yeah. and, I, and then I hit the, you know, I hit a quality shot in there. It's like, I just can take that momentum right back. Yeah, I was saying to Jeff earlier when we were watching your round, I, I really, particularly watching you here at Pinehurst, it's somewhere I'd really want to always go second because it really gives you, oh, yeah. I feel, a bit of an advantage. You can just see where, because the intention is the same, the landing zone, you want to you want to land it mm -hmm. in the same a, a specific area. And if someone just misses, you just want to not do oh, that. Yeah. But often, like what happens in real life, you, you, do, you make the same mm -hmm. mistake as your playing partner, mm -hmm. right? Oh. You do, you do, and that's. Uh, I mean, it's, that it, risk it's as well. you know, double yeah. edged. It's a double edged sword. I mean, you can totally. If you're not on, like, uh, if you're missing your dings and you're and you're kind of off and you're just not feeling it, then uh, it could definitely haunt you. Just, just gotta make this butt. He did. That a boy. Yeah. I think he's gonna have like a little more aggressive. Um, approach to these greens now, which uh, it's kind of cool about Pinehurst. It's one of the one of the courses that really are receptive to underpowered shots and punch shots to kind of allow for a little release because they have a lot of like those uh, you know turtleback greens, so you can kind of bang them into the front and let it release up. Yeah, talking about a. An extended bump and run shot is basically what you're correct. saying. Correct. Correct. Yeah, like uh, I think 12. 12 I love to hit. The, I, I did it today, actually. I hit a 80-something percent four iron in there and just kind of let it land short and release up the hill. And then yell at my putt and scream and then wedge it. <laughs> Are you going to yell when I tell you the Bears just signed Montez Sweat for a four-year extension at $98 million? Oh, that's so beautiful to hear, man. You know <laughs> you know what's crazy is, is all I keep hearing is, oh, we didn't get Chase Young. They gave up. If you look at the stats, man, Sweat is, like, far superior to Chase Young. So what, I don't understand what the big uproar was about, but I'm, I'm happy about it. It's a good signing. Some optimism from a Bears fan. Haven't heard that in a while. F Magnets. <laughs> Got a heartbeat. Yeah, he's, he's just out here being F Magnets. He 
see, he's still frustrated after losing that last hole. Such a perfectionist. Let's see how Jess responds to that excellent approach shot. He's going to go for a little underpowered yards. six. He's going to hit a little underpowered six into it. He's got to catch a ding here. Jess! Although, really not a bad result. That's workable. Uphill shouldn't shouldn't break very much at all. We noticed that in your game. A lot of balls missed where you had very straight putts. Yeah. Very yeah, yeah, yeah. not a lot of break. Was that fully on purpose today or did you get some breaks? 100% on purpose. 100% on purpose today. I mean, that's that's the goal at Pinehurst. I don't I'm not a uh it's the word. I don't really shoot for whole outs on Pinehurst. I'm I'm aiming to a portion of the green. I want I basically break it into like a quadrant, and I and I want to you know obviously one two three and four and and then I I want to put it in one of those quadrants, whichever one has the uh, the uphill putt that breaks the least, obviously. That is just well, off. Well, it's a Jess. game plan that's working for you. Yeah. 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 Pinehurst. <laughs> We've we've one talked good a little round bit here, about the next this. one's terrible. Josh, we've talked a little bit about this last year when we were in Dubai for the DP World uh, mm. DPE mm. Uh, World Tour Championship. Oh look, Jess oh, is look a little that. distracted, but fair enough. His Let's daughter go. scored a goal. Let's oh, go. Well done. That's awesome. That's some great play because I think if I'm if I'm not mistaken, he, he said that she was more she was a defender. She was a good defender, so I love that she's playing all the way out front. Nice. And managing to score a goal. She's gonna have a sweet USGA polo shirt at the end of all this. But Josh, I <laughs> want to say at the very least. Jeff. <laughs> at yeah. the very least, when we were in Dubai last year, you know, a, a Jason showed up and Don showed up. I think with these big sort of. Uh, you know, Sean McVay menu play sheets for yep. distances and for math. And you showed me your scribbles that you had done in your hotel room the night before. Obviously, Said don't lose. You're, not, you're not necessarily doing the same math. as This is coming in from F Mags. Nice shot there. But how about a course like Pinehurst? You're sitting at home for this competition. Do you write down or do you think about, do you tell yourself, you know, leave this ball here, leave this ball here on all these greens, or is it committed to memory after playing these, these courses so many times? It's committed to memory. There's a couple shots I know if I can be more aggressive. I think there was one shot I was, I was actually reading the green on the approach because I was trying to land it in a certain area to let it release to the hole. But uh, other than that, I'm, it's, it's committed to memory, but we're, just, we're basically just firing at locations on the green, those little quadrants, and, and just trying to leaving myself the easiest putts possible. Oh, by the way, um, <clears throat> Jeff, when we were in Dubai, um, mm -hmm. and you, and you uh, picked me to lose, I want you to know that I yeah. still haven't forgotten. That's why you won, though. Is it? We've, we've, we've established, Was Jess it? came on the broadcast. <laughs> I, I, called, I called Jess the underdog at the start of competition. So when we had him on during your match, of course he immediately called me up, called me out on that. And I said, it's a rite of passage for him to feel an inspiration from me saying something dumb on air. As that <laughs> just misses for him. He's feeling a bit off. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, he's got, he's got a lot going on too. His daughter being at a, uh at the hockey game's corner goal. I mean, yeah. his, his mind's probably not fully committed here. And, and you know, at, at the very least, what he walks Make away with. Difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. I know when my, my kids, uh, my seven-year-old's in travel soccer, and when he's playing, I'm a, I'm a lunatic dad. I'm a crazy <laughs> soccer dad. F-Mag's winning the hole there. Living All right, in. um... If you guys don't mind, I am not 100% today, so I'm going to get a little medicine in me and, and some water I'm before I play. Actually, Josh, I could hear in your in your throat. I okay, have, best stop. I have been really bad. So. Oh, bless you. It Folks, is that time of year, isn't it, when we, the season's We changed. might be looking at the Jay Smithers flu game today. This might be the Jay Smithers <laughs> oh, flu game. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I mean, if I win, then maybe we can make something out of it. But we got to go. We still got to play and win. All right, well, All we right, will... Well, 
Go on, Jules. Well, I'm just going to say, uh, we look forward to seeing you play, play well, and uh, rest up and have a great round. All right, we'll see you guys in a bit. Thank you for talking to us, Josh. We Bye. might talk to Josh later on. He'll get some Dayquil in him, do what he's got to do. <laughs> I think he's saving it. I think he's saving the strong meds. You know you can only take them every, every four hours, Jeff. I think As he's sort of saving it so he can have a real nice, uh, you know... Energetic yeah. rush of the meds. How about that? <laughs> what we just saw there, Jules. F. Magnets finds the bunker off the tee on this par 5 tenth. He talked about it up front as Jess clears the bunker. He said you won't get a lot of players in this competition missing the fairway and finding the bunkers despite the Pinehurst layup. But a rare, yeah. rare miscue there. He is. This is a par 5, so you do have just that Just making with it somewhat wind. interesting. <laughs> This is the third shot. It is unlikely for FMAX to be in this situation. He's chosen not to have extra spin on the ball. Just keep it quite neutral. You could see him talking about it. He thought that would carry with it without a problem. Uh, so surprised himself. And door is wide open for Jess to put this third shot in tight. There was a little bit of a headwind there coming me? on. Oh, Jess, disappointing to not take advantage of no way. what F Mags has to deal with. And now F Mags. With a great opportunity <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> to save the half here. Oh, he's got the heartbeats. On to... Oh, how <laughs> about to... that? Just a foot away from there. Tried to That's gotta be... steal it. Now, would... You, you would obviously make him putt out, right, Jeff? <laughs> From there? No. <laughs> Not yet. I would if it was, uh, if this was for the this win. The 17th. <laughs> Big chip shot for Jess. Oh, thought for a second on that camera angle. Like he got it. There's the concession. Yeah, they're both. There it is, yeah. You heard it earlier. Josh was saying that you can't par par fives out here and expect to win, and both players parring that par five. I think both of them are going to feel like it was a stroke of, well, F Mag's more so, stroke of luck for him after a mistake, perhaps. The golf gods, who are usually cruel, being kind. Okay, so he's going to rip it down the fairway here on the 11th. Couple of rips down there. This 11th hole, pretty straightforward. Players got a touch of helping wind. Jess, similar situation to what we saw from Ishimi, needs to put on the get the Jets early on this back nine. Missed an opportunity at 10. So more or less aiming for the center of the green here because there are winds coming off the left. No heartbeats, but it looks like a safe spot. <laughs> F Magnet saying, hope our viewers... Uh, our viewer has gone out for a cup of tea during this hole. <laughs> Neither of those players very proud of the performance on the 10th. No heartbeat. Oh, and he's right by... Jess's ball. 
but he will go first. This for birdie. Pretty straightforward up the hill. These are the putts that FMAX has been making today. Yeah, a little bit of break, but he seems so familiar with these greens, Jeff. I think he knows all the undulations like the back of his hand. Oh, Oh, but he missed that one. That was my commentator's curse. Carried. I'll take responsibility for that one. Carried some pace on the edge, and now Jess working very quickly. And draining it. Yeah. Well done. So Putting Jess, him to three down. Yeah, doesn't get the break on 10, but Jess is able to get it done on 11. Maybe some of the momentum turning. Another long par four here. You can see players are going to come up just short of that mouth, so not a lot of trouble on this tee shot. <laughs> I don't my <miss> cigars. <laughs> Jess, get someone to film your daughter and you focus on the golf just for these next few moments. It's going to be F Max first in the approach. 147 out, just an eight iron. This is a shot that he is licking his chops on. Could see how fast he's working. Oh, and it sounds good. Yeah, got a heartbeat, but was a little off on the meter mm. at the end. I think the shot was right. Jeff. The accuracy was just off. Jess also going for a seven iron in. And Doesn't get the heartbeats. Yeah, a punch shot, trying to keep it under the wind. And this will be a big breaker. When you do all the statistics and analytics and everything comes down to these small, minuscule details and proximity to the hole means so much, Jess just giving himself another putt over 10 feet, 11 feet here. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as you know, you know, with Ishimi's numerous missed putts, he missed by inches, if that. And they would have made all the difference. Oh, just like this one, unfortunately. Just oh, that's made a long turn. Mm. F magnets to get the hole back. He just dropped. Jules, this has some good break to it as well, but more uphill. Definitely the less trickier of the two. And of course, he's a couple of feet closer. So for the birdie and for the hole. Ah, oh, also missed. Surprising. F. Magnus was putting yeah. so well on the front nine, he's left a couple out on these last few holes. And it's something he's probably going to win this match, Jules, but that is something that F. Magnus is really going to have to lock up if he takes on Jay Smithers in the next round. Uh, absolutely, and he knows it. So best to get these mistakes out of the way here. 
But yeah, some some unlikely shots from F Mags, someone with such experience and who really enjoys playing here at Pinehurst. Players have the wind on this hole. They're going to turn it probably into a wedge on the second shot. That is blasted. Jess, oh, with the heartbeats. Let's see how close this gets to the hole. Just coming away slightly. But it's okay from there. F Max. I said it'd be a wedge in. How about this? A 60 degree wedge, and it looks like F Max wants to take the spin off. Type of shot that would be incredibly difficult in real life. Well, interestingly, Jeff, in his uh, winner's interview at Oakmont, he was saying that, you know, with those, gre particularly the greens at Oakmont, which are significantly uh, fast, he was saying that he does like to play with less spin for these kinds of shots so that he has a little bit more distance control. And it did pay off for him then. Some break in this, going to give it a little extra pace. Maybe that's what F Mags needs, especially in match play competition. Just trying to hold those lines. Just completes his putt. Didn't even give F Mags a chance to concede. On to the 14th, par four, 480 yards. Relatively straight fairway. Right in the middle. They will be approaching a green with a severe back to front slope. <laughs> it looks like Jess is calling the dramatic comeback mm -hmm. right now. <laughs> and of course... Jules, I can't imagine well, that'll, wants... that'll get any emotion yeah. out of F Magnets. Yeah, no, no, no. F Magnets is, is zen. Is zen on the inside and on the out. But, you know, Jess wants to go and tell his daughter something, you know, about what he did this afternoon. So, uh, you know, his daughter's going to come and expecting to hear great things. Looking good. <laughs> oh. F Magnet's both getting the heartbeat, hitting a beautiful shot, and also reading the chat while the ball was in the air. <laughs> Why not? Jess right back at him with a heartbeat. Oh, what a response. Look at this. Two excellent shots. It's amazing when you... Such a difference when you play in match play compared to stroke play, Jeff. Obviously, we have 10 contestants in stroke play, and here just the four, but the four have been gone through rigorous uh, competitive um, matches to get here, and it's funny seeing the balls all, almost always being side by side so frequently and seeing that level, that quality of the game being played. Jess is going to try to use this wind. Remember, this was the hole that we saw both Ishimi and Jay Smithers airmail this green on the back right. And we see it again. Mm. These are the best players. These are the best players in the world, Jules. Mm. And now we've seen that three times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
It's, it's, it's part of the competition, Jess. Part of the competition. You don't have to crank us up. Okay. Will F Max make it a four? No. Four times the a charm. There we go. And now Jess doesn't want to hear me say it, but this essentially to extend the match. And he almost stood oh. up to the challenge. Just Brutal. off. Let's see. Jules. Oh, no. <laughs> He's not. Doesn't need to see this from F Max. Similar way. That we saw from the last match, that is now conceded as an F Magnets hole. So four and three is the result for F Magnets getting to the final against Jay Smithers. A lot of what we maybe expected to see, Jules, I don't want to say it was straight chalk, Ishimi, Jess, definitely rising to the occasion in certain moments in their matches. But the favorites, Jay Smithers, and F Magnets, they get it done. And F Magnets, they are really dominant early. The middle of the round, there were a couple squirrely points, but he does put his foot down at the end. Yes, I think if for him, it was just a matter of getting it done. There were, yeah, as you said, there were some unlikely moments in his round, but he's one of those people where he just doesn't let those kind of shots phase him. He gets on with it. He moves on and, you know, he brings it home. He can do that. He's got the experience and he really enjoys this course. And I think that really shows. He's done it so many times before. These two players have done it so many times before. Let's take a look back at F Magnets. This is how he got things started at number one, sliding that in barely on the right side. And then he would win the second hole, Jess, just off on that putt. Yeah, and there was this one. There it is. This is the impressive putt that kind of became the difference maker to begin with with his round. That was an eagle for F Magnets. Just staying in the fight was three down at this point. F Mags to finish up the front nine. Finished there. That was a birdie to get to four up through nine. And at that point, things were feeling pretty good. There was... A brief moment there. Jess almost won the 10th hole. The par 5 had a great opportunity. Did win 11. The putter for F Magnus. He talked about it with us. We were watching Jay Smithers. He said he would want Jay Smithers putting over him any day. Jay Smithers said the opposite. But F Mags, while the putting was great early on, you saw some of those holes again in the middle of that round, especially with the putter, Jules. Absolutely. Um, he just has this familiarity with these greens. He just understands how to read them, you know, how much pace to put on. There are all these different components to putting. He just gets the formula absolutely bang on. Well, they both do. I just cannot wait to see now F Mags versus Jay Smithers, how that is going to end. Um, so one of them is going to be a double winner for this year's USGA Grand Slam series on WGT. It couldn't be more exciting. <laughs> we get the heavy hitters coming at you. We get a player in F Magnets who has had so much success in this game, so much success at Pinehurst. We get Jay Smithers, who you could argue has been the most consistent player in this game the last two to three years or so. We got to hear both of them talk about how they're feeling. F Mags, the last winner of the competition in our USGA Esports Grand Slam series. What do you expect out of the two of them, the way their game is right now, Jules? Oh, it is Im virtually impossible to call. These guys are, along with Young 46 and Master Hacker, the, 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 you know, the favorite three, the magic four, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, F Max, what I would say is when he has momentum, he's good at carrying it on. He played in the second semi-final at Oakmont and then he went on to win. So it's the kind of similar situation here where he doesn't have too much time to think about it too much and just go straight into his round. And here he is. Here they are. Uh, Jay Smithers, though, uh, you don't want to be up against him ever. So it's impossible to call Jeff. Let's just see. So you're basically calling Master Hacker the Andy Murray of this uh, big four here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, 
I'd say he's a bit better than that. I think that's unfair. That's giving, that's being, uh, doing Don a little bit of a disservice, I'd say. But yes, Master Hacker, he was, he was uh, be beaten by Jay Smithers, actually, uh, in the finals of his bracket. It is and of course, Mag Young 46 is not here either. Yep, <laughs> Young 46. We know he's watching. What's up, Jason? F Magnets, J Smithers. They are your championship match in our final match of the year here at the USGA Esports Grand Slam Series presented by Lexus. The match play challenge at Pinehurst. One more champion to crown. And it feels a little Ryder Cuppy. Right, Jules? Jay Smithers got the yeah. the aggressive American flag pants out right now. Yeah. Ryder Cup, Solime Cup. Yeah, either either's good. Heartbeat early for Jay Smithers. He's all right with that. It will be a downhill short putt coming back. Good sportsmanship for mentioning the Ryder Cup, Jeff. I wasn't going to personally. <laughs> I like hearing, you know, here F Max, did you do some comms on that match? Remember, Jay Smithers, we saw Jess talking about, they're listening to us when this competition is going on. F Max, he's locked in. He knows exactly what he's doing. He doesn't necessarily need to hear us talking about the match. <sighs> and he gets a heartbeat. And it's a heartbeat, yeah. Look at that, side by side, as we so often find in match play. Josh talked about it with us before. He's going he's gonna to make him see it. Gotta see this four footer from <laughs> F Max. With your encouragement, Jeff, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right down the heart. Good call. And F Max gives it to him. There's gamesmanship here. There is gamesmanship. True gent. A true gent. So come on, Jeff. What are we thinking? How many holes is this gonna take? I I, I, I probably see it to the full eighteen. Wouldn't let, you? Let's let's see it. Yeah, let's see it go the distance. I would expect these two to really be feeling each other out on this front nine. I don't expect as much aggressive play early on. I think these guys, both of them, want to set themselves up, want to be tied at the very least, going to that back nine, and then they've both talked about how wonky how difficult how yeah you know the, how do i put this inconsistent the back nine can be jewels so that's where there's going to be a lot of opportunities in match play yes i would agree with you i think the less popular holes are certainly found more on the back nine than the front nine not a ton of wind here seven to nine miles per hour these top players will eat that up. Good stroke, no heartbeat for F Max, though. <laughs> Je Jess is saying in the chat over here, Jules, that he actually he didn't hear me. He wasn't. He said, I wasn't listening to you, Jeff, but could hear you through the force, LOL. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I hate to say that I feel like I got in Jess's head a little bit today, but it was fun watching him and seeing what he was able to do getting here. That announcer's curse is always lingering, even when you're not even listening to us. In the ether, absolutely. Heartbeat for Jay Smithers. Tracking. Maybe a touch off from where he wanted, but it's going to be F Max with the longer putt. Apparently, Josh, apparently. <laughs> F Max giving this a long look.
Pretty straightforward, breaking left to right. These are the putts that can make the difference today. You have to take care of business from 10 feet. On these greens, you really don't want anything outside of that. And that is perfect. Right in the middle. Answered beautifully by Jay Smithers. As they halve the third. We expect these two studs to go blow for blow. Back and forth they go, sharing birdies early. I think this is when we start to find the game a little bit more interesting, as Jay Smithers was saying. The first three holes kind of relax a little bit. You know, they're, they're quite straightforward. And four is when it starts to get a bit interesting. Young46 noting in the chat, he says, he doesn't think we're going to see anything more than two upwind here. Last time, it took them 23 holes here. So <laughs> these guys oh can go at each other. If you're in the chat right now on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, excuse me, X, folks, X, let's hear who you think is going to win this competition, this championship match as these players are playing the third hole. F Magnets versus Jay Smithers. And this hole right now, Jules, this second shot into three, this is one of those rare approach shots on in this game that players legitimately are thinking hole out, hole out, hole out, just a little wedge in. It's a yeah, it is one of those birdie opportunities that want to be taken advantage of. A little bit behind the hole. Full shot for Jay Smithers. Not worried about the punch. Got everything he wanted out of it. Oh, and it's spinning back to the hole. Stunning. A touch of a grin. But both these players recognizing that Eagle is going to win you this hole. Birdie is not going to win between these two players. And Jay Smithers concedes. How about that? Yeah, I'm not surprised. All square. 3-3. We'll turn to the fourth hole. This a par four playing 565, but to the player's benefits, completely downwind. It's also a downhill tee shot, despite being the longest par four on the course. Everything that they need from a wind perspective going right. Of course, you're going wind for wind together. Same wins in match play. Going for full spin. <laughs> we Stop saw dead, Max. interestingly. Yeah, yeah, we saw him find a bunker on his second shot in a par five earlier today. A couple of these, his last two tee shots hugging those lines right between the bunkers and fairways. It's going to need some help from the wind here. Oh, coming onto the green. And running it, it through just to the came back. off the. Mm. 
This is where a big difference, Jay Smithers being a bit closer. That is a full three iron. And it's going to work out. Wow. Jules, we can get into the science of golf and launch angles. Jay Smithers <laughs> able to be closer, able to play that shot up like that with some spin, a different I've shot say, than I'm, what F Max was playing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm got to, I've got to say I'm surprised at that. But, you know, Jay Smithers, he's so experienced. He knew what he was doing. But I didn't expect a full a full swing from that. Young forty six noting that Jay Smithers is playing a higher spin ball in the chat. Ah, okay. Thank you, Jason. That piece of wisdom. That would totally make sense and play into taking that shot. F Magnets! Oh. Oh. oh! Just missed. That got exciting for a moment. Almost pulled something out of his Pinehurst hat from off the green. Now, Jay Smithers to take the first hole of the match. Yeah, just <laughs> well done. You can only hope for the for him to miss those if you're the competition. That is Jay Smithers converting, getting on the board. One up with four to play as we get to the fifth. This is the only hold that Jay Smithers lost in his first match today. Going into the wind, similar to what Jay Smithers, not F Magnets, had in their semifinal match. So you're going to be really hard to get this onto the green or near the green in two. So these players playing for position. Jules, we talked off the top about Donald Ross. This being his career gem. It opened in 1907, Pinehurst number two. And Donald Ross, who had actually been appointed the head pro at Pinehurst back in 1900, spent most of his winter seasons at Pinehurst. He was still pine. He was still fine-tuning Pinehurst all the way to his death in 1948 where he died while oh, yeah. residing in Pinehurst. So this, of all the Donald Ross courses, of everything that he did, this mm. was the one that meant the most to him, to him throughout his adult life. Yes, well, I mean, with over 400 courses that he contributed to, uh, this was his crowning achievement. And, you know, we shouldn't have favorites with children, as it were, but <laughs> it's got to be one of his favorites because he chose to live just off the third fairway third hole that was where his backyard opened onto so he was right on the course right there in the mix and he watched it and uh tailored it and tweaked it yeah for a, for a very long time for many years and it is stunning and it is so widely recognized as a very quite a brutal test of golf but um nevertheless um a very brilliant course in so many ways so offering that full 360 third. challenge. Yeah, leaving a little bit oh. on the bone, and Jay Smithers gets it in tight. So not making the mistake that he made earlier rolling off the left side. And now F Magnets getting tested once again to avoid going too down early. Quite a bit of break on this one. Not the easiest putt.
taking his time with this halfway through the shot clock and now giving it a ton of break. And he got it. Moving quickly. <laughs> but F Magnets did make that putt. So it stays at one up to Jay Smithers. We go to six. How about this, Jules? The runoff to the right of this hole, but the wind going right to left. So how tight do you want to cut that wind? See Champ in the chat saying three wood time. That's a three iron in hand for Jay Smithers. <laughs> And he's got the beats. Okay. Good look there at the wind at the last second, Jules, pulling that ball yep. left at the flag stick. He knew it. And so F Mag's oh, F Mag's opting to change from the three wood. I oh, know he's back on the three wood. Three iron in hand now. Just so hard to hold these woods on the par three greens. Yeah, the iron's definitely more of a conservative option. And a conservative oh. play. F Max well off with the meter, yeah. both in the power and the accuracy there. And now, how about this? This is not a putt that you want to see on this whole wavy putt from 17 and a half feet. Not taking out the sand wedge, though, like Jay Smithers. But it is downhill, fundamentally, towards the end of this. Oh, just didn't break at the end. Not a ton in this for Jay Smithers. F Mag's going to have his eyes on this, waiting to exhale. That was right down He's the got middle. It. Putting Jay Smithers at two up as they approach the seventh. So one third of the round through. Jay Smithers has two holes in his bag. It's been about a couple mistakes early from F Magnets opening the door for Jay Smithers. And that is pumped. Loves to cut that corner, as he said earlier today when we had him in the commentary booth. This is a tasty win for these players, getting the tailwind over that bunker. Mm -hmm. A little bit safe for Jay Smithers playing that down the left side. We'll see if F Max tries to get a bit closer. Yeah, you could see how much he's trying to cut this. He'll want more of a lofted wedge in hand. That too is down the left side, but slightly ahead of where Jay Smithers ended up. So 121 yards in. Again, similar to that par three we just saw, the wind coming off the right, pin on the right. So how aggressive do you want to go? The answer is very for Jay Smithers. <laughs> Are we surprised? Probably not. Bit of backspin. Nice. Not a ton of room to land that on the right side and get that correct spin and stay up on the green. But Jay Smithers does get it done.
full swing wedge into the seventh green. Looking good. Very strong play for F Max. He's got his putt will be uphill. Jay Smithers working quickly. Nice. It just feels like Jules for F Magnets to win holes. It's got to be on the par fives or it's got to be hole outs because Jay Smithers is not giving no. up anything less than birdie right now. Absolutely, Jeff. He's in full throttle, and I think he's, um, he's looking very strong out there. At this stage in the competition, definitely two down is somewhere he would have very much hoped to have been against F Mags. And he's not going to give that lead up very easily. So two up is Jay Smithers on the eighth. This hole, another long par four. Not so much helping of a wind, but that is going to give Jay Smithers 181 in. So no problem getting to this hole in two today. And then once again, it's kind of stopped dead here. Not using the same balls as Jay Smithers. Four iron in hand for F Magnets. You can see how much that club plays. He's going to play extra club here, take a little bit off. Wind's coming off the right. Oh, he's got the heartbeats. Obviously the right decision here. Well judged. How well judged? That oh, well judged. Stunning. That's got to be a concession, Jeff. Come on, even you. That, that'll be a concession. <laughs> the question is, Jay Smithers, not a ton of adversity faced early. Maybe his son dancing in the background could add to some <laughs> adversity right now for Jay Smithers. Hey, little guy. <laughs> the headphones have him in the zone. And now, now he'll go deal with that as yeah. this shot <laughs> was just what he wanted. Now, how far is it? Yeah, he's got to pop that one up. Josh has turned to his son saying, buddy, I'm, I'm two up. Two up through seven. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me finish this. Nice, nicely done. Okay, on to the ninth. Both of these nice. players won the ninth hole in their first matches this par, par three. Shortest par three on the course. It's quite a tricky two-tiered green here. Pin position where it is makes it a tiny bit easier than if it was in the front right, which it has often appeared. How about this heartbeat? How about Nicely this shot? Done. Oh. Yeah, he'll be happy with that. You missed it right, Josh. A 
F mags, flag stick out. These guys are thinking, go right at it. Yeah, I'd say, Jeff, for, with these guys, as we go on through the back nine, we're going to see a little more of the riskier shots being taken on, perhaps by F Mags as he tries to make up those holes. Nice. A little bit further away, so he will be putting first. Tell you what, this is a very fast nine holes, Jules. Mm. Definitely very, is. Via nine, very nice nine. Now let's keep it moving. 620 yards, this par 5, 10th, as Jay Smithers gets that going off the tee. Going to be hard to get there in two. We saw F. Magnets. He was able to have this hole with a par in his match against Jess, but hit his second shot into one of those bunkers just about 80 yards short of the green. So there are some crevices out there on this 10th hole. That is a three wood in hand for F Mags. And no problem with the bunker this time around. That's Jay Smithers also working quickly. Going to be a wedge competition. Yeah, I mean, it is. And for these guys, I mean, the shot clock is purely uh, ornamental, I'd say. It's not even close to coming into use for them. But this is a course where the approach shots really are of paramount importance. Giving yourself those shorter putts that you can capitalize on. Lob wedge in. And it's going to stay All up set. well behind the hole. Just... Such an interesting shot, Jules, just being off the green, but because it's Pinehurst, you've got to play these big, high, full shots. Yes, you do. And this is exactly what Jay Smithers has done. Just leaving himself a couple of feet for the putt. A confident scratch of the beard after that shot. <laughs> He'll get the concession, but he's going to have to see this putt from F Mags. F Magnet's trying to avoid making it two pars on this par 5 tenth. Pretty straightforward. I expect this to come with a ton of pace, Jules. And how? No reason to leave this behind. You know Jay Smithers is in tight. Oh, <laughs> and just... <laughs> <laughs> he did something nice today. Karma helping F Magnets out as these two players have the 10th. They work quickly on to 11th. Par 4 helping wind. So interesting seeing, having the cameras here, Jeff. It's such a, a, a treat um, just to see the expression on the face. You notice you, there's movements and there's beard scratching and, and little wiggles coming from Jay Smithers' cam, but F Mags is just, you know like a statue sitting there completely poker-faced. 
It's just got that inner piece. Now, they are speedy players, but I'm hoping that uh, the job gets done before 22 or 23 holes, hey? I don't know if we're going 23 today. And right now, <laughs> F Magnets. To break a record. Yeah, F, F Magnets, he just wants to make sure he sees 18 at this point. This pin placement seems innocent, but if you come up short, there's a false front. Hundred sixty one yards for F Max and you can almost see the frustration. Just trying to figure out where he is between clubs. <laughs> and didn't get the strike. It's gonna be a big uphill putt. Not really any better from Jay Smith, as you can see. He didn't love it. Mm. Being shoulder to shoulder on these last few holes. Which at this Not point, that's anything. all Jay Smithers wants to up. Mm. Mm. He's in a position where he can play a little bit more conservatively. WGT Nico, Michael, who was my co-host for the first book open, is on Twitch, offering to show pictures of his cat. <laughs> <laughs> Please do, Nico. I'd love to see what color it is. And, of course, Jay Smithers' team, along with uh, Jay Smithers and ECC371, the first book open live stream last month. Wonderful charity, worthwhile cause that WGT likes to support. And that, and that was a lot of fun. That is not what F Magnets needed right now. Curls that just off. Can he finally get a par from Jay Smithers? Who, despite not being thrilled with this shot, Jules did leave himself in a much better spot. Not a ton of break in this. Yeah. It appears that way, for sure. Hit the ding, and it's in. Ah, that is just pure three up now. He must be feeling spectacular with the way that he has been going about things. His honor as he takes on the 12th. 484, slight dog leg right, par four. Got quite a small green. Yeah, another yeah. par four slightly into the wind. But you'll see in the approach shot how that can many times help these approaches onto these Pinehurst greens. The special undulation of these greens. Piners number two will host the U.S. Open for the fourth time this June in 2024. Last time, Jules, the U.S. Mm. Open came to Pinehurst in 2014. It hosted both the That's men's right. and women's U.S. Opens in back-to-back -back weeks, and it will do that again in 2029. Martin Keimer and Michelle Wee in 2014 were crowned the winners of Pinehurst. Could this be and the Jay spark Smithers F Max needs? In the background as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's below the hole for F Magnets. Might have thought it 
had a better chance when he heard the heartbeat early. Jay Smithers, take, take a look at this. Using a four iron, a lot of club, going to keep the ball flight down. Oh. Oh. And it's just rolled past a little bit, but great line. Yuck, <laughs> he doesn't like it. <laughs> I understand what he was trying to do, keeping that ball, trying to run it on up, but maybe got a little cute with that four iron. Now has himself a 13-footer. Slightly uphill, though. Can he keep the birdie streak going? Not cute, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your opinion on that, but the result remains the same. You've got 13 feet here for birdie. This was the same hole, Jules, that Jay Smithers mm. hit the water earlier, earlier, the wedge putter. Yes, to avoid that little, br oh. And unfortunately, yeah, that's frustrating. But the door opens for FMAX. This is a gift right now for F Magnets. Just Make eight feet up the hill. Play it. Oh. That's brutal. And that's one that Jace, that Jay Smithers is going to take and run, and that F Magnets is going to be thinking about as he lies in bed tonight. Mm. Because that was a real opportunity to turn a corner, maybe turn momentum. It and now was, Jeff. it is still a three-hole difference. And I noticed it was one of the first times that he's showing a little bit of an emotion on the camera. Kind of disbelief with a hand gesture. Meanwhile, Jay Smithers is hitting us with the Cubs sweatshirt. Didn't realize he had that going today. <laughs> okay, I don't know a lot about American sports, but I have gone to see the Cubs. Jules has spent time in Wrigleyville. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. They all sung a song at the end, but I had absolutely no idea what it meant. <laughs> go Cubs, go. And they were, they were swaying from side to side. It was very cool. Almost like, almost like an English day. sport, right? <laughs> yeah, it was probably the equivalent of you coming to watch cricket. I mean, I really <laughs> didn't know what was going on. I didn't know about all those letters next to each name of the players. But anyway, it was all their stats, apparently. But I had no idea. I was asking uh, for help from the people sitting next to me. Unfortunately, they didn't get to watch and enjoy much of the match. I was too busy <laughs> asking questions. But there you go. Good karma. Well, next time you'll go to a hockey game when you're in the U.S. F. Magnets, 13th <laughs> hole here. He's got some wind helping up the hill, so got to try to judge this. Just a 70-yard shot. Interesting, he's gone for a full swing. Oh, and it just stopped dead, didn't it? No heartbeats, but it doesn't appear that he's too far from the hole. No, stopped at the top of that slope. Ah, heartbeats. The Jay Smithers. Just dialed is Jay Smithers. F Magnets just missed a similar putt at the last. F 
and that is a look at how fast this could get. He's inside most of that break. Wow. At this stage in the competition, this is not a putt that you really want to be faced with. Taking his time here, already 30 seconds gone on the shot clock. Contemplating his putting and life mm -hmm. at the same time right now. <laughs> he definitely has the face of Le Penseur, the thinker. Oh, maybe thinking too much. Jay Smithers That's disappointing. again. Doesn't even give him a chance to concede it. Just knocks it right mm -hmm. in the heart. And just like that, the mo momentum that looked like it might have been shifting, that F Max could have got it to two down just a hole ago. Now Jay Smithers four up with five to play. This could be a statement win for Jay Smithers. F Magnets look so strong in that first match today. And now he is trying to claw his way to stay in this match. Just clips Jay Smithers a touch with the drive. Sounding good. Looking great. Oh, oh, right on. That is a tap-in. And a point to the camera, Jay Smithers. <laughs> Starting to taste that trophy. Mm, really puts the pressure on for F-Mags here. A lot riding on this approach shot. Disappointing not to hear the heartbeats. That is a long putt at this stage. And it is a putt for all intents and purposes to stay in the match. And it's low oh. side again for F Magnets. It feels like that has been his issue putting for most of the day. And we're not going to see this one out. Jay Smithers, 5-4, and four, winning this championship match. And he is your winner of the match play at Pinehurst number two. Jay Smithers also won the best of U.S. Open this year. He takes two titles in our USGA Esports Grand Slam Series. Jules, a dominant performance from Jay Smithers today. He is that 360 degree player all round, stroke play, match play. He just knows what to do. All of those clutch shots, those approaches, he just understood exactly how to play, what type of shot where and what position was optimal at Pinehurst. And I think he's on the line, so we can congratulate him by voice. <laughs> we see it there Smithers? in the bracket. Jay <laughs> Smithers hello, hello. getting the win over F Magnets. And as we bring Josh in, also congrats to Jess 
and Ishimi for getting here. The one question we have is what happened on 12? No, I'm kidding, Josh. Congratulations. It's the proper (laughs) shot, Jeff. It just just went a little long, man. Congratulations. Congratulations on the win. A dominant performance in both your matches. A dominant performance there against F Magnets. He let maybe left the door open a little bit early on, and it just seemed like you were a birdie machine on this front nine. Oh, yeah, that's about as good as I can play Pinehurst right there. Um, so it, it was. It felt good. I was hitting every shot I wanted to hit again. I mean, both both those rounds were about as 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 well as I played this course. So it was nice to have that happen today. Here's the water you had on twelve. That's such a great shot, by the way. You gotta yeah, learn. You gotta it. teach me that shot. I like no, that. No, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that was a putt you made on six on seven. Right back at it with this birdie putt. You left yourself, like you told us after that first match, all about leaving yourself in the proper place on this course. Yeah, actually, I, I memory serves me correct. I didn't have a single putt today that was over one grid or break, which is ideal for Pinehurst. So anytime you can keep it within a grid and, and uphill, then you're in good shape there. Yeah, that's hard. Sounds to like your, yeah, it sounds like that technique of choosing the right quadrant and sticking to it and that as your position for your approach shots really, really paid off amongst other things. And also young 46 chimed in and said that you using a ball, a, a ball with quite a lot of spin on it today. Do you think that also had uh, a, an effect on, on the scoring? Yeah, it plays a huge role actually in, in the type of style that I play because I like to hit a lot of like kind of underpowered runner type shots um, or punch shots and uh, and the high spin ball lets me control those a lot, especially at Pinehurst. I can land it short of every hole and let it release up to it instead of trying to fly it all the way back to him. Equally, we saw a lot of backspin, you know, approach shots with had a backspin and you're rolling towards the hole as well. So in yep. both senses, that completely paid off for you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, good choice. <laughs> Feeling it sounds like sip is sort of like kick or whatever kind of meds you're on, but uh, you were full throttle there, weren't you? <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm on, I'm about to pass out meds. <laughs> well, we still got a few more questions for you. I oh, want yeah, to know fine. you a two-time winner this year in this USGA Esports Grand Slam series. Your other win came at the best of the US Open, Piners number two. These are difficult tracks. You know, sometimes we'll see players yep. on not that there are any easy courses on here, but sometimes they're a little bit more favorable conditions. These were difficult conditions and you made them look easy. How do you rise to the occasion on the challenging courses? Uh, you know, Young 46 and I, um, Jason, I talk about it a lot. Like we prefer chaos. Like I want <laughs> is it to be as nasty as possible because I've, I've, you know, I have a lot of different types of shots that I can hit into greens and it's very beneficial the type of play that I keep the ball down and low and let it run in those heavy winds or those nasty greens. So I, I want pure chaos at all times. I this When we get like a low wind tournament, I just want to like uninstall the game and yell at champ all day. Yeah, it does feel like with all the creativity and the spectrum of shots that you have in your bag to choose from really helped you today, particularly on Pinehouse and everything that Pinehouse throws at you. And that is something, you know, most people operate within this spectrum, some in that, but yours is just very, very wide. Big breadth there of shots of choices. Yeah, and it's something you need on that course. It's uh, it's not a course where you can just hit the same type of shot every time. It, it just doesn't work out well. You've been playing this game for so long. You've been playing these courses for so well. Another another dominant season for you do you feel like you're getting better are there still things that you're improving in this game as you look back at your season not just within the usga sphere but the w wgt sphere as a whole how would you evaluate your play um i mean it's since since the e-tour came out in the 2019 we had the qualifier but 2020 was the first year we did it it's uh it's gradually just continued to get better and better and and, and i've you know I, I really do enjoy this game. I love this game. I endorse it. I give those guys a hard time, but uh, it, it's a fantastic game, and it, and there's always something new you can learn. So uh, there's a lot of guys out there who you know um, 
can learn a lot by watching these these events and, and these guys that play them because man i mean mags is so good young 46 good master hacker jess made it today you know he won at piners last time all you gotta do is watch and learn and and you can really uh you know kind of upgrade your game a little bit um, on the Twitch chat, there's a lot going on. A lot of friends oh. in the community congratulating you. And someone has just called you the goat. How about um, that? I, I'm, just a, uh, I'm that? just a normal tour champion. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm nothing, sp you know, I just, you know, I, I go to work. I got off work this morning at 7.30, came home, you know, drank a cup of coffee. Thought I was going to die. Ended up, you know, making it here. And uh, just a tour champ, man. That's all. I'd like to go back to like <laughs> tour master because the teaser up that would be really cool but it's whatever you can we never love go your commitment to the cause yeah. so well you, done you <laughs> you can never go back to being a normal person Josh Jay Smithers <laughs> uh, we we saw we know you've got the kids back there we know you've got the kids back there they know they've got a special father we thought you might get distracted midway through the competition it looked like someone there maybe wanted to play with you or something how'd you stay focused with the, with dude the family he was, he was showing me his new car it's it's one of those cars where you like back it up and it rolls forward and I was all down for it I hit the shot you know laser focused hit the shot turned around I was like that's really neat bro like that's super cool do you mind maybe racing it over there do you mind like in this moment maybe to the left and he was like yeah dad i got you i'll tell you this champ is saying in the chat he wants to see the car i don't know if it's readily available but uh i mean i could get the car i could i mean <laughs> it's not a cool car but i can get the car it's oh right, i can get if here we, there was we might need there to it see is, it. actually it it was underneath my desk this is the car. Oh, there it is. That's Jules. That's it's what like helped a, propel like him to victory today. It's, yeah, it's, it's got a yeah, lot of I mean, things it, to it's it. It's less of a car. It's yeah, it's like a digger truck. It's combo. got yeah. You could race it. You could dig with it. I mean, you could run people over with it. It's it's an all-in-one fun time. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, no, not to sound crass. Have you uh, got an idea of what you're going to spend your winnings on? <laughs> My wife, of course. <laughs> Naturally. I thought Natural. it was going to be the kids. I thought you it was going to be the so, kids. Yeah. I mean, the kids get the USGA gift card. That's like, I'm like, oh, look, I got you some clothes. It's so awesome. Merry Christmas. Ha ha. <laughs> well, we know the little Smithers are all walking around the Chicago area in their USGA gear at all times because Jay Smithers, That's right. again, an incredible season. Two times a winner this year in the USGA Grand Slam Series, finishing off with a win in our fourth competition here at the Match Play at Pinehurst Number 2. Congratulations, Josh, and we will see you for more competition of some sort here in WGT Golf in 2024. Absolutely, and uh, I mean, you're always welcome to just come join us, Jeff. Jules, you're welcome as well. We put together a little show on our own, have a little fun. So thank you very much. You guys have a great day. Thank you. You too. Feel better soon. You think you can hit our quota, Jules, for uh, for calling some, some competition within the community? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it sounds like fun. I'm game. <laughs> um, how about that? He was ill yeah. as well. He yeah. had distractions, illness. I mean, he's just the yeah, game, <laughs> but he really had every single part of his game on form today. Uh, this is on the fourth and they were neck and neck three, three. Yeah, that was a wedge that he used. Ishimi came right back on five. Hold this out for Eagle. You were thinking, hmm, could we get something special here? Could we get Ishimi? making a run at an upset. But Jay Smithers came back down the stretch on this front nine. This was slamming the door on nine to go three up at the turn. At that point, he was in cruise control, wasn't going to give Ishimi an yeah, inch. I, I feel like there were no upsets, really, or no, I mean, no mistakes from Smithers, only a little bit of luck from Ishimi. I'm sorry, I've got to say, not to take away that but, you know, an eagle, a chip in usually has a lot of luck to count for it. And then, of course, in the final with F Mags, F Mags did leave himself some very tricky parts. 
uh, even though they were well within 10 feet, a lot of them were downhill and he just couldn't ever push through the door whenever there was a little opening for him that he had potential to make a hole up uh, with the scores. Yeah, uh, Jay Smith is here, just missed that. But then, uh, like I said, F Mags just didn't deliver uh, on those opportunities that he was presented with. Yeah, we saw F Mags Make that eagle putt on five in his first match, but just didn't have the putter going. Really, after that front nine in his first match, seemed to lose a step with the putter. Jay Smithers wasn't going to give him an inch. And this is a statement. Jay Smithers, we know how strong of a player he is. We know he's part of this big three. But what he was able to do in this match, winning five and four, that was the statement shot on 14, putting it in tight. Everything seemed to go right for him. He's a player that when momentum is on his side, you just know that you're going to have to go out and beat him. He isn't going to make mistakes. In the case today, there were some mistakes made by F Magnets, and that's not going to work against Jay Smithers. No, no. And, and Jay Smithers maybe had one or two slightly wayward approach shots, but that was it. That was the full um, story of his mistakes, i.e. there just weren't any. He was creative, I found. Uh, so, you know, that water shot, water shot? I don't, I don't know water, how you pronounce water, it. Water, wedge putter. Yeah. What a, where, exactly, exactly. Sorry, I'm just learning. Um, but also, I don't think anyone... You're still there, Jeff. Are you good? Um, I don't think anyone would have called... Uh, I'm uh, still here. Up. I'm still here. To, <laughs> I don't think anyone would have called it that early on in the round right at the beginning. Um, I think that's fair to say. A lot of us thought it was going to go down to the wire, 16, 17, even 18. But um, to get that job done just early on just shows that he was just absolutely on fire but commiserations to f mags he has had a win so not too many commiserations of course he's got comes away with a second prize he has got a match play uh title with him but yeah all of the kudos goes to jay smithers today for a fantastic round of golf jules how about jay smithers talking about loving the chaos of competition what do you think about pinehurst we saw some players playing out of the bunker we saw some runoff of uh, balls off the green definitely a unique place to play a match play competition pinehurst yes it gets everyone thinking outside of the box like jay smith has said you can't uh try and offer the same shot for every situation that you're in so all your approach shots are going to be very different from hole to hole uh likewise with the with the putts and the and the second shots and wedges yeah there's just so many things to think about and i think the chaos is what allows for that creativity jess uh, jeff excuse me i think that's what means that you got to live in the moment and be very, very present to what is rather than think I'm going to go into my stock file of facts of shots. You just kind of got to look at what's in front of you and make do as you were. But that enables you to play more freely. And that's what we saw from Jay Smithers today. Yeah, Jess is the individual that called me out earlier today. <laughs> as we look back at this competition, Jules, it's been a pleasure calling these competitions with you so far this season. What are your final observations from the 2023 USGA Esports Grand Slam season? That you are a fantastic no, that's not it. That's lead commentator. That's got to be down at like it's 17 been... <laughs> on the list, maybe. <laughs> not at all. I do have a long, long list, but we, we don't have time for that. No, it's been wonderful commentating with you. The USGA Grand Slam series, I think, creates a situation. It is the virtual, you know, golf majors, um, which is brilliant. We're wonderful that we can have that particularly as the weather's getting really rubbish outside and golf <laughs> is becoming less and less possible, particularly here in the UK. Um, but... It's just great to see the creme de la creme of golf, virtual golf talent being able to play and witness them and see how they play. And it just makes you want to play, uh, makes you want to step up and really understand uh, all the work that go and practice that goes into this. You know, these guys are veterans and they work hard at it and they play a lot. So practice really does count but yeah it's been amazing it's been so interesting the best of the u.s open also seeing the amalgamation of all the best holes that are on the wgt um tournaments that you can play yeah it's just been great it's been really well put together thank you also to super league gaming for sorting this out thank you to lexus for the sponsorship usga of course 
And thank you to you, Jules, for making me seem competent. Thank you to all the fans <laughs> out there for all your support. And sometimes, in my case, sometimes the shade that's thrown you know, my way, I appreciate it. I deserve it at points. Like you said, Jules, the USGA, WGT, our production team, everyone at Lexus, our presenting partner. Thank you so much for an incredible season. It was, to remind everyone, ECC 370 winning the virtual open at Pebble Beach. Jay Smithers, the best of the US Open. F Magnets match play, the match play challenge at Oakmont. And today, Jay Smithers once again winning the match play at Pinehurst number two. From all of us here, at the USGA Esports Grand Slam Series. Thank you for watching, and let's go forward to 2024.